Hey friends, today we are hanging out in New Orleans and I am so excited. Disney invited me here to join up with some Disney Imagineers and show you the amazing research they have done to bring Tiana's Bayou Adventure to life. We are going to hang out in the bayou, eat some amazing food and have a beautiful New Orleans kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. We have explored so many amazing places the past couple of months and there's so much more I want to show you. It's a big world out there, but I can honestly say this might be one of my best videos and best trips I've ever been on. I am so incredibly honored to be included in this. I've always been a fan of Disney Imagineers and I think they have the coolest jobs ever. And hearing stories of Joe Rohde going to Asia and Africa to do research to build Animal Kingdom was one of the greatest things I've ever learned. And now I get to be a part of it here in New Orleans for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We're gonna be retracing the steps of the Disney Imagineers who are working on the attraction and going through their research process. We're gonna be diving into the bayou. We're gonna rent a boat and go out on the bayou and check out the wildlife. We're gonna explore the city and see the arts, listen to the music, and then we're gonna have dinner. We're gonna eat at the most iconic Creole restaurant in New Orleans, Dookie Chase. And this place is the inspiration for Princess and the Frog, the great late Chef Leah Chase was Princess T Tiana. Like, that was her. And this is so unbelievably amazing. I can't wait to share it all with you guys. But first, I just got here. I have to get checked into my hotel and I need to get coffee. And then we're going to start the day. And I guess the best way to start out the day is with some beignets and coffee at Cafe Du Monde, original French market coffee stand right outside Jackson Square here. Also, take a look at this New Orleans sign. Gives you a little bit of the history, and I kind of just like the way it looks. This is my first time ever visiting New Orleans and I'm so excited to share that with you. There are so many things that I want to do and I've always wanted to try the beignets at Cafe Du Monde. I've always hear people talk about it, I see it on travel shows and finally I get to do it. I'm starting off my day with some beignets and coffee. Here it is, Cafe Du Monde, the original coffee stand, cash only establishment. They've got signs everywhere and uh, table service, so please be seated. Here's a little bit of the menu right here. Look at this. Definitely getting some coffee, definitely getting some beignets. Orders of three French donuts, $3.85. Wow, that's actually really affordable. In my experiences, any place or any establishment that runs a cash only like operation usually has really, really good food. I don't know why it is that way. Like most pizza places, if they're doing cash only, it's going to be good pizza. And um, I feel like maybe it's the same way with beignets. There are places you can sit inside and outside, but I just want to show you this really cool plaque right here that talks about the history of Cafe Du Monde and how it's been here since the early 1860s. And this is the inside seating area. It looks so cool. I'd rather sit outside though, but this is really like awesome to see. I am honestly so surprised on how affordable everything is. I got a cafe au lait and also an order of beignets. So you get three beignets and then a small cafe au lait and it came to $7. $7 for both. I don't even think I can get a Starbucks coffee for the same price as both of these items here. And take a look at that. Look at those beignets. They really don't hold back on the sugar. And the coffee looks really good. I'm excited to dive in. Hopefully I don't make a mess. The beignets are super hot and fresh and I cannot wait to dive into it. As long as I don't breathe in real quick or cough or anything like that, I'm sure I can avoid any powdered sugar mess. So here we go. They are so good. I don't know. It's gotta be the batter. Like it's not like fluffy, it's just very delicious. So much flavor and I'm sure it's gonna be great when I combine it with the coffee right there. What a combination. 
I have eaten one beignet. I have powdered sugar in my beard, on my hat, in my coffee. Literally, I don't even need to add sugar because you just put the coffee underneath it and it'll actually catch all the sugar that you need. And I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy right now. All right, I am calling it quits here though. I am very full. And look at, I did really good with the powdered sugar. I mean, it's just a little bit, but if you just look around on the grounds, you'll see powdered sugar everywhere. And would you look at that? I got a snazzy new hat. What do you guys think? I think it looks good. I always like to buy new hats whenever I visit somewhere I've never been before, but now I gotta carry this one around with me. From where we were just sitting, Jackson Square is right across the street here. And they've got a whole bunch of different horse carriages over here. And I kind of just want to walk around and explore a little bit. Lots of art too, I like that. This is a very busy area and lots of tourists just walking around, including myself. And you'll see art vendors, live music, and a couple of really awesome jazz clubs that I'll point out. But we're just gonna walk around and explore a little bit until uh, our hotel is ready for us. I made my way down to Royal Street and this is so amazing. I am so happy to be here. A lot of people have no idea how much influence New Orleans has on Walt Disney World and Disney parks in general. In the late 1950s, Walt and Lillian Disney came to New Orleans for a vacation and when Walt was browsing around all the different shops and stores, he came across a mechanical toy bird and he was so fascinated because the toy bird could flap its wings and it can move its head and he just wanted to know how it worked. So he ended up purchasing it and then bringing it back to the Disney Imagineers and that was the inspiration for audio animatronics. How awesome is that? We have to thank New Orleans for audio animatronics and that is such a big thing in the Disney parks. And then eventually Walt decided to bring New Orleans Square to Disneyland and that's how I kind of fell in love with the idea of coming here. Like when I visited New Orleans Square, I was like, wow, it would be amazing to go to New Orleans. And look at us, look at us, we're here, we did it. Can you even imagine what the world would be like today if Walt didn't actually walk into that shop and find that bird? So now I feel like I want to explore every single shop, whether it be a voodoo shop, a local treasure store, an antique store, or even a mass shop. You know, you never know what could happen when you walk into a store. One of the reasons I love Disney parks is the fact that they put in so much research and they really become subject matter experts in whatever they are designing or creating. And I think that's what makes it as special and magical as it is. Right here is the original Pat O'Brien's and take a look at that mint julep sign they have hanging there. How cool is that? And then right next door is Preservation Hall. And this is one of the most iconic live music venues in all of the world. Some of the most famous jazz musicians have actually performed in here and it's been around since the 1950s. It has like all hardwood floors, no AC, and we're actually gonna be going there later with Disney. I can't wait to actually be inside there. It's going to be such an iconic moment. I can't wait to share it with you, but that's a little bit later on in the video. In fact, I'm pretty positive that Disney first made the announcement that Tiana's Bayou Adventure would be coming to Disneyland and Walt Disney World right here inside Preservation Hall. So how amazing is that? I cannot wait to see the inside for myself. And we're gonna keep moving along down to uh, Bourbon Street. For the most part, this is gonna be the loudest area that we're gonna be walking around. And probably the most popular and busy area too. It goes all the way down that way and then all the way down that way to Canal. And it is super busy here. And all they got the balconies up there, tons of different stops for parties and drinks and little tiny restaurants. It is really, really a very bebopping spot. 
Now it's time to head back to the hotel. Our room is ready and get ready to go explore the bayou. I am so excited. We're going to be joining up with some of the uh, Disney Imagineers that are working on Princess and the Frog. Well, not Princess and the Frog, uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure and exploring the bayou. The hotel I am staying at is the Nopsy Hotel, and it's so awesome because this used to be the New Orleans Public Service Incorporated, and this was like their office building, and this is where you would come and pay your utilities, and as you walk around like the French Quarter in New Orleans, you'll actually see uh, sewer grates that say Nopsy on them. All right, we are all checked in. I switched out my outfit. I've got my my Princess in the Frog Roosevelt shirt on. I felt that was very fitting since we are going to be going out on the bayou and then going to eat at Dookie Chase's restaurant, which is the inspiration for Princess in the Frog. And I'm so excited. And the main point of this video is to show you how much research and attention to detail Disney has put into creating Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And we're going to dive in to some really amazing amazing New Orleans and Bayou just customs we have made our way out to Cajun Encounters. This is a swamp tour on the bayou, and it's about 45 minutes away from uh, our hotel, but it is so beautiful here, and I cannot wait to actually go out on the bayou and probably see some wildlife. The main reason we're going out on the bayou is because, like I said, the Walt Disney Imagineers who are working on Tiana's uh, Bayou Adventure actually did this, and this is how they got their research on how they want to design the attraction itself, and they're kind of giving us a guided tour, pointing out the things that they learned, and that's so amazing to me. Like, I'm literally, I, I'm geeking out over this whole entire trip, but this right now is definitely something Thing I'm gonna remember forever. This is gonna be so awesome. I'm not too sure how loud it's gonna be out there. We're just going in like regular pontoon boats, but at least they're covered. But I cannot wait to see some of the wildlife, some of the plants, and just explore the bayou. We're, we're on it. Look at this, look at that. Oh my Lord, I didn't see this behind us, but this is where I wanna go. I wanna go down that way. We just put on plenty of sunblock and then also a uh, bug spray. So we should be good on that. I was gonna wear pants today, but it's definitely way too hot for pants. Obviously, I see a lot of alligators in Florida, but it's, it's kind of cool to be able to see alligators in a different state. You know what I mean? Especially New Orleans alligators. That's the fancy kind. He's coming over. He's coming over. You ain't saying no for the word. He came to your side. He likes bright colors. Nope, I'm good. So what you do? I'd hold him. When the Imagineers were doing their research for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, they were actually looking for all the different animals that are in the bayou itself. So they wanted to be very particular with that. And it's really cool because I'm hoping to spot more than just alligators. And uh, we'll just keep our eyes peeled, you know? One of the cool stories I heard from the Imagineers that are working on Tiana's Bayou Adventure when they came out and did this, uh, they heard like some something rustling in the woods and then an armadillo came out and they got so excited. And now they're like, oh, we can add an armadillo into the attraction. I think that's really cool. I think we're about to pick up some speed here. Holding on to our hats. Hold on to your hats and glasses, folks. <laughs> Whoa! Woo! Alligator! Whoa! This is great! <laughs> Be hot. <laughs> 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 bon ano, 
buy you. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, does anyone have a jacket? Oh, he can sense fear. <laughs> he can sense fear? I I tripping. Yeah. <laughs> I I ain't even I ain't even scared like that for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord, he's coming straight for us. We're getting attacked on all sides. <laughs> this one's circling. We got a gator in the front. There's three of them now. We got a gator. Oh boy, they're coming. Oh, there's another one. We're surrounded. There are alligators flocking from all over the place coming to the boat. And we got another one coming up right here. Oh! Oh! <laughs> that, was, that was too close for me. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was. A, <laughs> and I'm a little afraid now. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm a little shaken now. Is this the same guy? Is he coming back? Oh boy. Look, he's gonna scare you as much as he scared him. All right, so we're gonna ease back here into the swamp a little bit. It does get tight. It does get narrow. So if it looks like I'm gonna hit something. I'm probably gonna get it. Wow. This is okay. where I want it to be. <laughs> oh, it's a raccoon! I got so excited for a raccoon. There's another one! Look at there's another one coming! Oh, there's another one right here. Oh, he's close. Let's really close. Really yeah. Oh, no. Oh, it's four now. Oh, oh, they're so in touch with alligators. Yeah. Oh, my lanta. Oh, oh, you even moved. That's so cute. <laughs> so raccoons can't uh, actually swim, so they just climb the trees, and they don't like to come out from, like, the trees themselves because of alligators, and there's an alligator in this area. So the raccoons are being very careful. Look, here comes one coming out of here. Look at it. Nope, that's an alligator. I did not expect to see raccoons in the bayou. I didn't even know they were actually here, but I mean, they could be anywhere. But that was really cool. And it also plays back into when I was talking about the Imagineers finding all the different animals. And I think they have like... Like, I think they said like 11 or 12 different species. I might be wrong, but I have to check, but that's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, oh, now we got some turtles coming in. Look at Now, do alligators eat turtles? Definitely. Definitely. That's like a crunchy McNugget for him, right? Um, just ruin chicken nuggets for me. <laughs> you just... <laughs> it's 3D! Okay, please, please. It's 3D! <laughs> I did this with the Muppets. I don't need to do it here. Oh. Another thing the Imagineers were researching when they came to the bayou was all of the plant life, like all of the trees, the lily pads, and they wanted to make the ride look as much as the bayou as possible. So it's kind of cool to notice these things, and we are getting really close to a tree right now. <laughs> we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit. That's the tree right here. Uh, it's one of the oldest Boom. I'm sorry, I kind of panicked because I was recording and then we were kind of inching closer to the tree. But, like I said, speaking of trees, Imagineers were really looking at all the different plants and trying to make the ride as identical to the bayou as possible. <laughs> Oh, oh my lord. Like walking. Oh, poor turtle. Uh -oh. That's a big turtle. This is the worst time for us to be tilting this way. Don't make eye contact. He's kind of mean. What? Yeah. He's coming in hot. He's, we're tilting. 
Exactly. Captain, are you joking or for real? No. Okay, okay. He said he's not joking. No, he's oh, fine. He's, 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 real close. Close. he's right on you there. See what happens. Yo, dude. <laughs> we have an alley. Oh, oh, he's going for the raccoon. Oh, oh, no, no, he's a raccoon. Run, run, run. Run. Get going. Run. Run. Can we run. scare him? Get out. There's a right. gator, go! That's real life! I told you, man. <laughs> the amount of love raccoons are getting on this boat is so amazing. <laughs> raccoons stole the show. Like, they really did. <laughs> we got a giant blue heron here. Oh. They actually just said that the blue heron is responsible for most of the uh, baby alligator deaths because they actually eat baby alligators. Looks like he's hunting for one. Look at you. It's good luck when a dragonfly lands on you. Is it? Or is that a ladybug? I think it's a ladybug. I'm going to go with it because um, I'm not the most comfortable right now. <laughs> You don't like it? If, why won't it leave you alone? I don't know. I think it's fascinating. I can't look away. <laughs> Yo, dude. <Yeah. laughs> it's, it, it's pretty cool. You, you literally have a dragonfly sitting on your knee. <laughs> the bayou tour was incredible. So many memorable moments. Everything from the raccoons to crashing into trees. I loved it and I'm going to remember this forever. This was this was so epic and it wasn't even that hot. I didn't even like sweat at all. It was actually very breezy and cool and now we're going to leave and continue on with the, the Imagineers and uh, follow their footsteps on research and we're going to go to the Yaya Art Center. We have made it to Yaya's Art Center and I can't wait to actually show you around and talk about how awesome this place is. Yaya stands for Young Aspirations and Young Artist and it's a center here in New Orleans that teaches children art and it keeps the arts alive and uh, Disney actually reached out to them and they had an artist actually commissioned to uh, draw a couple well make a couple pieces on Princess and the Frog and then they drew uh, inspiration from those pieces and we're gonna see one of them today and we're gonna talk to them about it and then also we can even buy some art if we want to and I think it's really cool like I said you want to take in it all the food the art the music everything and they just want to make it as actual to New Orleans as possible I have decided to actually buy this Josephine Baker uh, piece of art right here and then also over here the Fats Domino and I'm gonna take these home with me so that I can remember my New Orleans uh, trip. Now we're gonna take a quick break and Marlon West who was one of the animators or there, he's actually a part of Disney animation. He worked on Princess and the Frog. He's actually gonna come in and do a little teaching lesson here at Yaya, uh, Yaya's uh, for all of the students and I think that's that's amazing to have a Disney artist come in and actually show you some things. So hi everybody, my name is Marlon West. Walt Disney Animation Studios. Um, I'm a visual effects supervisor there. I'll kind of explain to you what that is in a little bit. Again, this is one of my kind of draw livers, and uh, she's staring down in the water at kind of a standing contest. And this is the scene from the, from the film. Final color. And this just kind of shows all the different little pieces that we, that we have. So this, this, this is flat and we kind of, you know, these are all computer cameras, so they actually are 3D space. I am so excited. I'm going to be taking home some art from Yaya's, and now it's time. We're going to go get something to eat. We're going to the place I've been waiting to go to for such a long time. I'm going to get some good, authentic gumbo and jambalaya. 
and we have officially made it to Dookie Chase's restaurant. I am so excited. It's been around since 1941, and like I mentioned, it is the inspiration of Princess and the Frog, and Chef Leah Chase was the inspiration for Princess Tiana, and uh, sadly she did pass away, but the family still keeps everything running in her memory, and we're gonna actually talk to the, the Chase family and hear a little bit about their story and also try some of the amazing food. Chef Leah Chase was such an inspirational person within the community and they actually called her the Queen of Creole and it's so awesome when you hear a little bit of her well when you hear a little bit of Dookie Chase's history you're gonna see the similarities within Princess and the Frog and actually once you actually watch Princess and the Frog, you see the beginning scene where Princess Tiana and her father are making gumbo, and then once they're done with the gumbo, they come out and they actually give it out to the community. That's much like Dookie Chase is here, and it's gonna be amazing to be inside there and actually just be at such a historical place. Dookie Chase's restaurant gained notoriety as a safe place where people of all races could sit down to meet and discuss strategies for the civil rights movement. And iconic civil rights leaders such as Thurgood Marshall and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. all gathered upstairs in this dining room. And Leah Chase used to say, I like to think we changed the course of America in this restaurant over a bowl of gumbo. And then they have like a little walk of fame outside of the restaurant right here. And you can see some of the most iconic names out there all going down. Like I mentioned before, this restaurant is the inspiration for Princess and the Frog. And I am so excited to dine in here. You can see some of the artwork on the wall. Congratulations, Leah Chase, on 95 years of magic from your fans at Disney and ABC. Isn't that so cool? And then you have a ton of other artwork and I'm just really excited to be here. This restaurant is so beautiful. I love it. You have some piano music up there, awesome artwork, and it just, it, it's, it's such a great vibe. We've got nice plates right here. In fact, I would love to buy one of these Dookie Chases uh, plates. How cool would that be? And then we've got the menu, and I am so excited. Look at how amazing this is. Wow, and Princess Tiana's here right now. We're gonna meet her in a second. But look, this is also one of the uh, artworks that Disney commissioned uh, the artist from Yaya to actually make, and it is beautiful. There she is. It is an honor to meet you, Princess Tiana. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, I love yours as well. Well, thank you, kind. And my yeah. really did herself up. Yes, yes, she really did. And I love this whole area you have here. You got a piano, right? Beautiful parlor. <laughs> and I have some music to practice my dance moves too. Oh, very cool. Oh yeah, I'm a pretty good dancer. I, I think I am. Well, you know, Naveen and I have a dance lesson every Tuesday and Thursday. Oh. He's told me everything I know, so maybe we can have a dance lesson together sometime. Yes, I would definitely come as long as I can get some man catching beignets. Oh, of course. <laughs> that was super awesome that we got to meet Princess Tiana, and now it's time to eat. It's time to get down to the business. Well, I'd like to welcome you to the historic Dookie Chase's restaurant. And I am telling you, we are so happy to have you here in this magical place. And on behalf of Disney and all of us, imagine, oh, sorry, I am an honorary Imagineer. <laughs> I better not overstep, and I'll turn it over to Coleman, the real Imagineer. Well, I have to tell you, well, welcome everyone. And Stella is an honorary Imagineer. Actually, Stella travels with us. Uh, you all were on the Bayou trip. She's been on the Bayou with us. She brainstorms with us, so Stella, it is just an honor uh, to be here with you, to be here with the Chase family. You know, Stella has the key to the city, but what Stella really has, Stella really, really has, is the key to her heart. 
Here is a look at our menu. We've got some welcoming cocktails. We've already had the lavender lemonade, and then we've got the Leah Garden mocktail, which I'm gonna try later. And then to start off, we have Oyster Rockefeller Spice Post Shrimp, and then we get Creole Gumbo, watermelon beet salad, and then the choice of one, stuffed beef filet with twice baked potato and asparagus, or grilled redfish with crawfish and jeweled rice. Oh, wow. Or if we get the taste of fried chicken, which honestly, I might go all fried chicken. And then we're going to end it with some strawberry shortcake. All right, the gumbo has arrived. And I think I'm going to eat my food with my name tag on it the whole time. But take a look at this. Look at that. I cannot wait to dive in. All right, here we go. My first bite of authentic gumbo. And now my stuffed filet has arrived. Look at this. The asparagus, the twice baked potato. This looks phenomenal. I cannot wait to dive into it. I'll let you guys know what I think once we get out because it's a little loud in here. It's a very packed room. Can you share with everyone here the roots of, of the Chase family? Okay, my mother was at a function where my father's band was playing. And of course she walked in and she was a very pretty lady. And he, she caught his eye. And he said to the band members, as my brother always tell, look, we can start this song, you're gonna continue it because I'm gonna ask that lady to dance with me. So that lady, my mother, Leah Chase, danced with my father. And that was the story. That was the love story. It just so happened that his parents had a restaurant that opened. And so she came into the restaurant business through her lover's heart, her lover's family, and became part of the restaurant. And that fulfilled her dream that she always had to open a restaurant, to own a restaurant. She had worked in restaurants, but she had never been able to accomplish the dream of coming in and owning a restaurant. And of course, her love of restaurants, as she, uh, she was in high school, she used to walk through the French quarters looking at all the restaurants, looking at all the fine dining. And this gave her that opportunity to change, which was a, a po' boy stand, a family-owned restaurant, a small restaurant, into what she wanted it to be, Tiana's special place. And that's what we have today. Well, that was incredible. The food was amazing, the atmosphere, the art, the stories. Just hearing more about the history of this place really gave me goosebumps. I wish I could have showed you the food more, but it was a very intimate setting and I didn't want to just have the camera out and about. And uh, I just focused on enjoying the time. But if you do get the chance, please come here and check this place out, especially if you're in the area. I feel like I am going to want to come here anytime I come to New Orleans now that I've been here and uh, yeah it's not the end of uh, the video we're actually gonna carry this over into tomorrow and uh, we're gonna have a couple more big surprises we're gonna go to Preservation Hall and we're gonna learn more about the music and the art of New Orleans and how the Disney Imagineers actually pulled from that to make more of Tiana's Bayou adventure authentic as possible. So we're gonna jump to the next day now. And good morning, New Orleans. Today we're gonna be hanging out in the French Quarter, making our way down to the Jazz Museum, and then also Preservation Hall, where we're gonna be seeing some amazing live entertainment. And uh, it's gonna be a fun day with a lot of fun surprises. Honestly, this has been incredible for me. Last night we left off, we had dinner, and it was great. I went home, I slept, and now we're back at it today. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. I guess this has been the best. 
the historic New Orleans collection manages and upkeeps a lot of the different museums and buildings here in the French Quarter and we're gonna be just going around and checking them all out and then like I said eventually making our way over to the Jazz Museum and uh, yeah it should be very interesting one of the coolest pieces of art that I've actually seen on this trip is right here for the Mardi Gras parade scene from 1945 and it's oil on canvas and it is a massive canvas. Look at this. Look at how beautiful this is. The detail. But probably my favorite thing is the little hidden Mickey. One of the things I find amazing is this aerial shot of the French Quarter and you can see Jackson Square right here and we can like retrace, I can retrace our steps, you know what I mean? Goes all the way to Canal and then here is the French Market that we were at the other day and look at that, isn't it just amazing? Another really cool piece of history is the River Queen here and take a look at some of the literature they have here Like it's really cool, you know steamboats and Disney have a long-running history itself But just look at this come aboard last of the famous packet boats River Queen only five only five bucks from Jackson Square and then the Mark Twain lounge. They actually had mint juleps in there Isn't that so cool? Mint juleps are featured. Learning all the amazing history of the French Quarter in New Orleans is quite awesome. And now we're making our way to the New Orleans Jazz Museum. And music is a big thing here. In fact, I think the very first opera was here in the French Quarter. So, and I'm kind of excited to see how the Imagineers used that information to come up with original soundtracks for the attraction. And maybe we might actually get a sneak peek at maybe, maybe a song maybe that'd be really fun the New Orleans Jazz Museum is actually located right next to the French Market we actually we visited this already and also you can see the business district all the way over there this is really really nice and I love how they kept everything on the outside kind of the way that it's always been this is really really incredible we are allowed access backstage to the archives this is, this is, wow. These are all scrapbooks and newspapers going all the way back to the colonial time. And I think that's so amazing. Some of them have dates on them. Like I'm trying to look, see. I wish I can actually see inside the books, but um, I mean, I would never actually want to touch them. <laughs> I feel like they're far too delicate for my hands. And yeah, some of them are going all the way back. Look at these dates, 1906. 1902 that is incredible um, wow it has films um, it has a old zulu coconuts oh the zulu um, coconuts there are some and some of this is stuff that was damaged in katrina uh this drum and i think that's some um pieces of uh, michael white's dr michael white's clarinet wow you know, and now because they're damaged, they're moldy. They have to be, you know, permanent. yeah. They're permanently in a freezer. Are the Zulu coconuts hollowed out, or are they? Uh, they are hollow. I mean, yeah. The the what they do, don't quote me on this. But what they yeah. do is they drill a quick hole, drain them, yeah, um, shave them. Sure. You know, as they say, you know, you're what are you doing? You're shaving your nuts. Shaving your nuts. Um, yeah. And uh, and then paint them. So that's awesome. Yeah. Now that we're all finished at the Jazz Museum, it's time to move along and we're making our way to Preservation Hall and look at how beautiful it is over here. This is exactly what I thought like New Orleans would be like and we're going to one of the most iconic places for jazz music to listen to some jazz music and probably eat some food. And then here is the Preservation Hall. This is cool. Hardwood floors, no AC. We're going in. I love the look of this. This is incredible. Nice to see you again, oh, Princess Tiana. Nice to see you again as well. Yes. I love this outfit you have on. Thank you. I love yours. It looks like you're ready for some dancing. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I've been practicing with the bean this morning. I think I'm doing a pretty swell job. Oh, well, very nice. Yes, I yeah. know you've been practicing your dance moves too. I have been. I, you know. You're going to have to come and show them to us at the restaurant sometime. Right? Oh, yeah. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Well, that's really cool. Princess Tiana decided to make an appearance, and now we're gonna actually head on in, and I think they're gonna have a big announcement, and we're gonna hear uh, some live music. Also, he's writing an original song for us, as well as arranging songs from Princess and the Frog. Please welcome to the stage, P.J. Morton. Yeah! yeah. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Pirate's Life for me, I can only hear it when I ride that ride. People will only hear the magic that PJ is bringing. Probably not, because we're going to spread it out. To <laughs> the but they're not going to. They're not going to hear it for real with Tiana being right in front of your face until they come to either Magic Kingdom or Disneyland and they experience Tiana's body adventure. That that gets me excited. That gets me excited. <laughs> Amazing. I am like kind of I, I got the chills. There were so many things that were announced some of the things I couldn't film But uh, we did get confirmation that we were gonna have original Music and as you've seen PJ is actually gonna be writing the songs and I think that is phenomenal and then also we had a little Q&A with the Imagineers afterwards and they are just so inspirational honestly they're heroes to me and I made sure to let them know that and uh, they did confirm uh, that uh, there would be all physical representations of the main hero character so uh, Princess uh, Tiana she is gonna be an audio animatronic uh, Prince Naveen, Mommy o Mama Odi, all of them, and plus the other 17 uh, uh, characters that they made. So we're looking at 20 plus different character audio animatronics. That's, 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 that's beautiful. It's gonna be hard to top the preservation hall. It was seriously an honor just to be in there and to be in the same room where so many amazing, talented musicians actually played. But we are gonna carry it over to a celebration and we're gonna uh, go to Mardi Gras World. Mardi Gras World. All right, we have made it our final stop. Mardi Gras, thank you. Mardi Gras World. Look at this. Kern Studios has been here since 1932 and you can see some of the Disney things that they have. You have Launchpad over here, we've got Yoda over here, and I mean we've got a whole entire warehouse full and we're just going to explore and walk through and point out a couple of my favorites, you know? This place is really, really magnificent. You can see all the floats and years the past it's really cool even like full floats you know i would love to come here for actual mardi gras season i mean i've done you know other celebrations before but how cool would it be to ride on one of these you got the wizard of oz over there and it goes on and on we're starting the tour now and making our way into the warehouse itself we're gonna see some production on how they make some of the Mardi Gras floats themselves. Look at this in here. Wow. Oh, is that Genie over there? We're gonna get a close look at how they create some of their masterpieces here. And we're actually gonna go in the uh, 
like mechanical room here and you can see the robot arm actually doing all the work and we're gonna get up close to it look at that It's really cool that we're getting a little bit of a behind the scenes look uh, here at Mardi Gras World. We're actually back where they're actually finishing up some of the projects that they're working on and they're doing a lot for maybe some theme parks that are uh, located in Central Florida. This is the, uh, the front of the float. Look at that. That's so cool. Like, People are actively working right now as we're walking through here. This is restricted area only, and you can see them actually putting in the final touches on some of these awesome pieces. This is incredible. Wow. Sherlock Holmes. Oh. So is this for one of the crews here in New Orleans? Cool. Yeah. Nice. This is a little disturbing though. The bottom halves of all these people, the mannequins or the, the whatchamacallit, look at that. You just see legs, legs for days. And over here we got fingers, look at <laughs> broken fingers. Look at this thing. We've walked through all of Mardi Gras world and now it's time for one last surprise. Look at those smokestacks right there. They might look familiar from Princess and the Frog, but here we go. Wow. This is amazing. Holy moly. Incredible. It's so amazing how they have a bayou inside of a warehouse. Look at this. They got music. They've got like little tiny buildings over here. It really, it, it's like a, it's a modern marvel for me. With that, we danced our way out of the bayou and concluded this amazing trip. Thank you so much to Disney for inviting me out and giving me the opportunity to just show you guys all of the detail they are putting into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And honestly, I can fully say that I feel like Tiana's Bayou Adventure is going to be a spectacular attraction. I cannot wait to be able to ride it and reference all the things that I've learned on this trip. I can not wait to just experience it and see it all come to life. I got to meet so many amazing people. I made friendships. This was literally one of the best things I have ever done in my life. Like I will talk about this to my friends and my family for years to come and uh, yeah it was amazing. So thank you again to Disney. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I put a lot of hard work into this uh, trying to edit it as possible like as best as possible because I really wanted to make sure that the Imagineers, Disney, and everyone that is working on this project, I want you to know how hard they actually are working at it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's time to, time to head home and see my little Gracie girl. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. And I definitely want to come back to New Orleans.